I want to talk about uh, crank balancing for single cylinder uh, engines. The uh, most common method being used now is the balance factor method and that's a method that was uh, initiated for for uh, 90 degree uh, V8 uh, car engines. So um, it's it's a method that can work but it has one really major flaw in it and that you have to know the correct balance factor percentage to use for the intended uh, peak RPM that you want to use and it can vary greatly it can vary from anywhere from 30% uh, to 60% so um, that's the biggest drawback with it if you know someone that has experience with your type of engine and he can give you some guidance as far as what balance factor to use then that's that's an okay kind of a southern way of doing it kind of a backwoods way of doing it I prefer a more modern method and that is using a spreadsheet calculator because you can really nail it right on the, right on the head exactly what you need the balance factor method basically is is putting the uh, the conrad at a horizontal uh, angle and letting the uh, small end rest on a digital weight scale so that weight of that small end resting on the scale plus the total piston assembly weight you add those together and then you multiply them by the percentage uh, so if, if the percentage is 60 percent it's it's basically 0.6 because 60 divided by 100 is 0.6 and then that weight in this example is 36 grams it would be right here so if you put 36 grams right here with the crankshaft uh, supported on both both ends of the crankshaft something metal uh, that you can oil also so that the crank can easily spin either way so with the 36 grams hanging here you would adjust the balance holes until the crank does not want to turn clockwise or counterclockwise when you set it in this position right here it'll stay that's the balance factor method and let me show you the reason why it's dependent upon RPM which is also the same case for the uh, using the spreadsheet it's dependent upon RPM there's two forces going uh, happening in the engine you've got the up down of the piston and you've got the rotational force of the imbalance crank I say imbalance because when you put counter hole, counterbalance holes on one side it creates a virtual extra weight on the other side but the force of those of those two uh, systems of the the up and down and the the rotary do not change at the same rate given the same rate of change of the rpm like in this case you got 2000 to 10000 rpm this is the rate of change of the up down force uh actually the the upward force at, at tdc and the downward force of the crank at TDC throughout this whole RPM range. So you see they're not they don't have the same rate of change. So where they cross is important. Where are, where do they cross on this this scale of RPM? That's very important. So like I said with the uh, with the balance factor method you have to know the correct percentage to deal with dependent upon the RPM and with the spreadsheet this is my spreadsheet this is showing given the the whole sizes that I've input here this is showing that it's perfectly balanced at right near right past 81 probably 8200 rpm 
so the general idea is that like right in the middle of the pipe power band so like if the pipe power band is 2000 rpm long there'd be 1000 rpm before the uh the top rpm right in the middle of the pipe power band you want that to be zero you want the the, the balance to be perfect that zero means that the vertical forces is equal to the horizontal force and um, this is not really to scale right here so it's hard to see but but it is uh, it is correct so um, this is the uh, the spreadsheet and and the light blue boxes is all the data you have to enter so you basically have to take it apart and if you can't take apart this section right here you have to measure and estimate it and this is an estimator of the, the bearing weight so with all that and the compression ratio exhaust port duration uh, at whatever rpm you enter right here it'll it'll show you just below here it'll show you um, whether or not it's zero or positive or negative and then you can adjust the hole sizes to, to to change that this is graphed every time you click on this uh, button right here so um, also you can input uh, for plastic aluminum or lead being filled in the holes and you can also use it for a four-stroke engine as well as a two-stroke um, it works great I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, want to ever go back to the balance factor method the main reason being why is that the uh, the Conrad this spreadsheet has uh, has a section below the the normal view that I showed you where it has many many calculations uh, every 15 degrees it'll calculate for each of these these virtual weights of the counter the four counter sections because they they don't have a, a a normal circle they have an oblong circle of movement and so every 15 degrees the the uh, centrifugal force and the uh, inertia of each one of these points is calculated and then added in to to what's happening with the piston assembly and the uh, the crank this to my knowledge is the only program that uses this method to determine the contribution of the conrod to the reciprocating and the rotary forces and this is my invention and to my way of thinking it's the only correct way to do it so that's why I highly recommend using my spreadsheet because of that that way of calculating that it does so I've got another video explaining more in detail uh, how to use this program. You can refer to it if you want more information about it. Okay, thanks for watching.